Good quality cross-country ski poles are crucially important to good skiing, yet they are one of the most overlooked pieces of gear. So let's dive in and discuss why that is. There are three parts to the cross-country ski pole. Starting at the bottom, the pole baskets are lightweight and made to contact the snow at an angle. They have an obvious front and back. On the bottom, there will be a metal tip. Fancy pole baskets will have higher quality plastic and higher quality metal. On our ski team, the coaches will be looking to make sure that everyone has a cross-country specific basket on their poles, and not alpine or walking baskets like the ones I show here. All cross-country ski poles come with cross-country baskets already on them, so this is hardly ever a problem. The shaft is the part that you pay the big bucks for when you buy a really fancy pair of poles. Good poles will not only be strong and light, but they will also be extremely stiff. We'll talk more about why stiff poles are important a little bit later in this video. For now, let's discuss the two materials that shafts are made out of, which are aluminum and carbon composite. Now these days, aluminum is only used in the less expensive pole shafts. So most of the poles that we see young children on are made out of 100% aluminum. Now these poles are inexpensive, but some are actually better than others. The good aluminum poles are actually pretty light and fairly stiff, but the cheap ones will feel heavy and or soft. But even the best aluminum poles are prone to getting bent, especially with kids who aren't so careful. And so when they get bent, you will just need to replace them. So over the past couple decades, carbon fiber has made most of those aluminum poles obsolete. Among the carbon fiber composite poles, there are many different shafts to choose from, and you get what you paid for. Lighter and stiffer shafts will perform better, and they will cost more. The grip and strap of a cross-country ski pole work together so that the skier's hand can release from the grip when they are at the end of each stride cycle, and the strap will help guide their hand back to the grip as they begin their next stride. Did you know that cross-country skiers don't keep their fingers wrapped around the grips? They actually grip and release on each stride. That's why it's important to have decent straps and grips that work together. Here's an image of some racers. And in this image, all of the skiers are in the phase of their stride cycle where they have pretty much let go of their poles. And if I highlight this image and zoom in, then you can see there are no fingers wrapped around their pole grips. Here is an image of a skier's hand gripping the pole and then another image of them releasing it. So you can see the way that the strap connects their hands to the pole. Here's an example of a comfortable strap with a Velcro enclosure that will hug the skier's hand. Now open loop straps like these ones are okay, but most skiers find that the Velcro straps are much better. By now you know that alpine ski poles like these simply would not work. The ergonomics of the baskets, shafts, and the grips are all quite different than what is needed for cross-country skiing. Classical and skate techniques each require a separate set of equipment, and so they'll each have a separate size of ski pole. Here's a skate skier, and um, here's the same skier. Um, happens to be Torin Koos, and he's skiing classical, and you can see that his poles for classical were a little shorter than they were for his uh, skate skiing. Classical length ski poles should come up to your shoulder, but they should not be taller than your shoulder. Your classical length ski poles should be just long enough that you can squeeze the grips under your armpits when you're standing up tall. This image of Sadie Bjornsson uh, shows her classical ski poles are so long that they actually come up to the top of her shoulder. This is the tallest you would ever want classical length poles to be because your pole length affects your efficiency when you stride. But sometimes top racers will actually use slightly longer poles than that because it gives them an advantage when they are double pulling through a straight section of race course. But these long poles are not desirable when you are learning to stride up a hill. So 
we just reinforce that what we're looking for is a ski pole that you can fit snugly in your armpit when you're standing up tall. If you wanted to be extremely precise about measuring the longest ideal length for classical poles, you can go with the rule that they should be no longer than 83% of the skier's height when they're wearing skis. So what about skate skiing? How long should your poles be for skate skiing? Well, here's an image of Jessie Diggins, and you can see that she's got her skate gear here with her, and the ski poles are a little bit longer. They go about up to the height of her mouth. To be precise with the length for um, skate ski poles, I would say if you're standing up tall, then the top of the pole should come up to at least the bottom of your chin, but it should not be any longer than the height um, of your nose. In fact, that's actually pretty long for skate ski poles. So now that you know the different parts of the ski poles and you know the right length for classic and skate, let's talk about why it's good to have a stiff pair of ski poles. When you push on a stiff pair of ski poles, all of that push is transferred into forward movement. However, if your poles are soft and flexible, then much of your effort will not transfer into forward movement and it will go towards just flexing the ski poles instead. You just saw a clip of me double pulling with a nice pair of skate poles, so now I want to show you what happens when I do the same double pulling but with slightly softer poles. My body position does not look as good with these softer poles and let me tell you why that is. So in the clip you can clearly see that the poles are bending. Of course, they don't stay bent the whole time. It's just that they flex right at the moment when I'm pushing on them. And when I'm skiing, I can really feel the effort being lost in the poles. But losing effort into the poles is only part of the loss here. I'd like to bring your attention to the point that with the soft poles, I just can't seem to get my body in front of my feet. I'm going to try to show you what I mean by getting my body in front of my feet. This image is uh, slightly at an angle, but I think you can see that I'm standing fairly vertical. And this is as far forward as I could go with these poles, but usually I ski with my body much further forward. So on these soft poles, I cannot get my body far enough forward. The reason is because these soft poles are already loaded beyond what they can carry. If I leaned into the poles more than this, then the additional force of my weight and momentum onto them would just make them bend more. They would just keep bending. And as an additional point, if you'll notice, the baskets of those poles that are flexed are now about a foot further behind where they would have been if the poles were stiff. And now here I am on the stiffer poles. You can see that I can get my body much further in front of my feet. This part here shows that the angle I make with my body on the ground is actually measurable. It's a, it's a forward lean and this is desirable in cross-country skiing. And I am not able to teach skiers to do this movement unless they have strong enough poles to hold their weight. Uh, you might think that only top adults need good poles, but then you'd be wrong. Let me show you a clip of some 12 year olds. Go! In case you didn't catch that, here's the same clip in slow motion. Now these guys wouldn't lean so hard on their poles if they didn't have the confidence that their poles were good enough quality. Here are the 10 year olds. What about the really little kids, like the eight and under? Well, here they are. <laughs> Go! Now, we didn't necessarily teach them to do this movement at the start of this race, but it is one good example of why ski poles matter. And what I've seen over the years is that the kids who've been skiing with good poles just learn to rely on that equipment. This is an important point because even the best coach couldn't have convinced those skiers to do these same movements on a pair of unstable poles. <laughs>